I got a great question from People's School student, Al, on empathy. And I want to do a little deep dive. It inspired me to think a little bit more about, okay, let's talk about some real practical tools, actionable tools for empathy. Empathy is a concept we hear about a lot. Constantly. Constantly. It's on every podcast, yeah. But let's just break this down into action steps. Like, How do we actually do this in our everyday life, especially as professionals? So from Al, hi, Vanessa, what are good ways to improve empathy? So first, I would like to define my version of empathy for you. So empathy is our ability to understand and feel another's emotions. And this is the key. People with high empathy are able to, one, relate to other ex- others' experiences, two, mirror another person's emotions, and three, sense what others around them are feeling. It is a super skill. It is a super skill. And the reason is because I define empathy in this way, that it's the ability to read a room very well. It's the ability to predict emotions. I think that people who are highly empathetic are often less confused. For people who are highly empathetic, they're able to read the room, read emotions, know what needs to happen next. And so I think that that's why empathy is such a super skill is on a practical level, it helps you have clarity around what actions need to be taken and what needs to be said. That's how I think about, about empathy. It's the antidote to confusion interactions. And as a recovering awkward person, I'm always looking for keys to clarity and, and ways to fight confusion. Is there a difference, Vanessa? What is the difference maybe between empathy, being empathetic, and emotional intelligence? EQ, EQ, okay. Right? So emotional like, intelligence. Intel- I'm sure they're connected. Somehow. Yes. Emotional intelligence is the umbrella un- and empathy falls under it. So emotional intelligence mm-hmm. involves far empathy as well as reading faces, as well as being able to verbally communicate emotions, Mm -hmm. as well as being able to ask the correct questions, as well as um, being able to understand your own emotions. Um, So empathy is one under the umbrella of emotional skills and having empathy and being empathetic, I would use interchangeably. Mm -hmm. So it's a good question, Mm -hmm. but it's an aspect of EQ or emotional intelligence. So how do we break this down into something that's more practical? When I think about making empathy practical, I think about curiosity. Curiosity is the side door into empathy. I think when we think about trying to be more empathetic, it feels too much. It's like, I I can try to mirror people's emotions. I can try to understand what people are feeling. No. All I want you to think about is, can I get curious about what, what others are thinking and feeling? Curiosity is the fastest way to lead you to empathy. So forget empathy for a moment. It's just about being curious. Okay, let's break that down even further. How do we become more curious? One, the very basic level is asking questions like you already know they have an incredible story. And this is a mental trick that I play because what often happens in interactions is we're socially scripted, right? We ask, how are you? How's your day? What do you do? do? Where are you from? Right. How's your week been going? Socially scripted. So a mental trick that I often play is, okay, how do I get to the next level of questions internally? How do I get really super curious? Like not just curious about how your day is, but like aggressively curious, you know, like, like very, very curious, which leads us to empathy, which is I pretend that they have a fascinating story. They're just a little bit hesitant to tell me. Mm -hmm. I literally tell myself, and this was, I learned this trick when I was writing Captivate. So when I was writing Captivate, I was looking for anchor stories. So Malcolm Gladwell is one of the writers that I look up to. And I noticed that in his books, he has a formula. Every chapter, he has an anchor story, a big story that he starts with, a study, an anchor study, a scientific research experiment or a a piece of data, and then some kind of takeaway or action step. And I love that formula. It's like water. It's so easy to read that. So I was like, for Captivate, that's the same structure I want. I want an anchor story, an anchor study, and an action step. So um, what I did is I was looking for anchor stories for years as I was writing the book. And so every person I talked to, I would wonder, could this person have an anchor story? I had 14 chapters Mm -hmm. to fill and captivate. And so I'd be like, maybe this is the person who has the anchor story. And so it totally changed the way that I asked questions because I was searching to see, do you have the anchor story? Are you my person? Are you chapter 12? And I found 14 people Mm -hmm. for my anchor stories and it changed the way I asked questions. And so ever since that experience for the last eight years, nine years, since I wrote Captivate, I, that's what I've kept. And so my, I share that kind of very uh, specific tip with you is ask questions. Like you are looking for an anchor story, ask questions. Like, you know, they have an incredible story hiding. It's also a great way to, I think it can be so easy to fall into the, why do I want to start the conversation with these folks? They're always going to be boring. We're going to have boring answers. They're all 
accountants. Sorry, accountants. I'm using you as an example, but like, yeah, it's hard. It's it's assuming a really positive interpretation of yes. every every person, and it's it's like a self fulfilling prophecy, right? If you go in with good expectations, you're more than likely to have those met. If you go in with bad expectations, you're going to have those met as well. Okay, such a good point. It gives you a why. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it gives you a why to having better small talk when you're like, I don't really know this person. It's a friend of a friend, right? Or it's like a colleague you don't really work with. Why are we in this conversation? Maybe they have an amazing anchor story. Mm -hmm. And th th all that means is it's a way to practice your empathy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, second, so that's the first step. Second level, listen for and mirror their words. Okay. So you've asked some really good questions. You have really good intention. Now you're listening for trigger words. You're listening for words that sound like they're not socially scripted. You're listening for words like passion, excited, happy, sad, mm -hmm. upset, uh, lonely. Could it also be how they're, how they're delivering those words? Like if they emphasize a certain word? Yes. I mean, yeah. you can do it. Like that's like, that's even like next level. You're listening for uh, emphasis tone. You're looking mm -hmm. for eyebrow raises. You're looking for things like that are sparks. It could be good or bad. Right. And those are the words that you want to try to mirror. Right. So if I hear someone who's mentioning a certain word that they clearly are passionate about or gets them excited or it's like emotional for them, I will try to use that word back to them. Right. Like that is empathy. What you're doing is sensing an emotion and repeating it back in a very practical way. So instead of, you know, esoterically thinking, I'll try to mirror their happiness. No, if they use words like excited, engaged, motivated, you should use excited, engaged, and motivated. It's just a way of reflecting back to them. I hear you. I see you. I reflect back to you. The next one. So this Scott right. just mentioned. Are you referencing tone. their story back to them? Or when you say you use the same words back? Yeah. Are you, how are you continuing the conversation and weaving those words in? Yeah. So like if someone's sharing you, sharing an exciting story, oh my gosh, I was, you know, like it, it would go something like this. Um, I was so excited this weekend. You know, my daughter, she just started her, her kindergarten class and I was just it was such a huge moment in my life to just see her graduate from, from baby to kid. Oh my gosh, that sounds so exciting. Mm -hmm. I was excited. What a huge milestone for you and for your daughter, I see. right? Huh. So I'm reflecting back the excitement, the huge milestone, and then I'm building on it with a better question. So, okay, what if my anchor story is there? Like, what if there's an anchor story here? What surprised you most about her first day? Mm -hmm. Is there anything surprising that happened, right? And then they can be like, oh, surprising. Right. Because I broke the social script of congrats of leaving it there. I took it one step further. So thank you for breaking that down to how to how kind of how it works. The next step is what Scott mentioned, which is tone, body language. So if they're leaning in, you're leaning. If they're using eyebrow raises, you're using eyebrow raises. This is level three. So I only want you to do this if you've mastered level one and level two. Right. So then we're mirroring body language. I like to mirror positive and neutral body language. I try not to mirror negative body language because you can kind of get yourself in a negative spiral. However, if someone is sad or upset, sometimes I can, you can show sadness on your face for them. You know, if they're, if they're down, you can also take it down. So you can show negative cues out of respect, mm -hmm. but I try to emphasize the positive or the neutral, if that helps. How about and, touch here too, touch? Yeah. If, if they're comfortable with touch, I love using touch. Mm -hmm. um, another kind of like side note here is um, if you do the body language they are doing, see how you feel. Really highly empathetic people will often mirror the face they see to see what it feels like. That's very advanced, but it can help you. If, if someone's you know, like this and their head down and you do that and you're like, wow, I feel ashamed. That could be the emotion they're feeling. And so that's a way to tap into the emotion. Um, and last tip here is, and this brings me to my next um, big idea, which is asking level three questions, asking all three levels of questions. So we learned about this in skill number seven. In skill number seven, we talked about the three levels of questions, the three levels of intimacy. These are critical for building empathy. What the, the secret message, mission behind those questions is they're getting to better answers to help you tap into true emotions. Mm -hmm. So if you can go through all three levels of questions, they are so powerful. Remember, those are 15 power questions. So you can go back into your workbook, into section seven, likability blueprint, and grab those questions, keep them handy, start with level one and see how someone opens up to you, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's where I want you to start. So hopefully that is helpful, yeah. a little bit more empathy in your life. Do you want even more tips on communicating with confidence? One of the fastest ways to achieve more success and more respect is to level up your people skills. If you want to master communication and increase your charisma, check out People School. This program comes with 12 in-depth video modules designed to radically change your interactions, communication, and confidence. You'll start applying each principle to your life 
immediately. I'll share my social blueprints, conversation frameworks, and fascinating science-based insights, everything you need to finally understand the unwritten rules of behavior. Ask questions and get personal answers and feedback after every module. Join me for our live monthly workshops where I deliver exclusive new teaching only to people school students. I'll show you exactly what to do to be more influential and impactful in every conversation and situation guaranteed. And if for some reason the program isn't right for you, no worries. You can get a full refund within the first 30 days. Thousands of students have joined People School and achieved their goals. Here's what just a few of our students shared about their experiences in People School. I got the promotion I was looking for. Thanks to the People School team for helping me along the way. What a ride. I have to say that I wish I was in People School way earlier in life. Wow. So much to absorb and can't wait to do it again and again. Since People School, I have never had such engaging and fun interviews in my life. Last Friday, I accepted a senior position with an increase in my total package of $100,000. People School has provided me with an exceptional amount of value and knowledge. I feel that there is so much to offer from this program. I'll be going through the lessons again. Thank you, Vanessa. One of my biggest regrets is I wish I had enrolled in People School years before now. The best part is People School never expires. We constantly add new bonus modules based on student requests. Want to raise or raise your rates? Check out our How to Get a Raise formula. Need new friends in a new city? Check out our how to find your people bonus. There are more than 35 hours of material waiting for you in people school. If you want to level up your career, your relationships, and your conversations, I would love for you to consider people school. I read every single one of your comments and can't wait to meet you in our next live workshop. Thanks so much for watching until the end. I'll see you in our next video.